Yes, Lord. Yes. Right. Thank you, Jesus. This morning when I rose. Yes, yes. yes Lord. Jesus. I didn't have no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. I knew the Lord. Yes. yes, Lord. We'll take care of you. Yes. Yes. I know the Lord. Yes. We'll provide for yes. you. Yes. And he'll lead yes. and guide you. Yes. All the way.
we have just a quick thing before we journey to the word of the Lord. We have been moving so swift around here and at the beginning of the year the Lord had spoken to us that this year we were going to put the spirit back in the church. Mm -hmm. I was here for both nights of revival Monday and Tuesday and I sat there and as devotion was going on what God told us at the beginning of the year as it relates to putting the spirit back in the church mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it or not but when we come to church on Sunday and even in revival the Spirit of God literally does what He wants to do. Come on, somebody. He has literally been moving all around this place. And, and, and so that, that, that's an assurance right there that whatever God says, it's going to happen. And in case you don't know or not, it's only made the first. Come on, y'all. This is what God has been doing. And so we thank Him for what he has been doing. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him for what he has been doing. Thank you for putting the spirit. Amen. In our lives. Amen. Um, this coming third Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Um, it, that marks the 50th day after Easter. When the Holy Ghost made its first appearance in the upper room. So I that week I'm going to be in deep prayer about the Spirit continuing to do His work in all of our lives. And if you will, if you would like, you can also join in that prayer. Just pray that we, that the Lord would continue to have His way with respect to the Spirit. And then on the third Sunday, we will celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Yes, uh, that's the 50th day after Easter. If you like more about that, you can read in Acts chapter 2. And that will mark the day of Pentecost. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I want to go to John the 18th chapter. I don't know what the Lord is doing with respect to the gospel according to John, but everything he gives me when I look it up, it's all in John. <laughs> so if we understand why John was written. A couple Sundays ago we discussed why John was written. John said, that this gospel was written that ye might believe. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 So we are praying that uh, the words that are being said are helping you in your walk with the Lord. John the 18th chapter. 18th chapter. John the 18th chapter. I'm going to read 16 through 18. Then I'm going to jump down to 25 through 27. I'm going to skip verses 19 through 24. I'm going to skip those. John chapter 18, beginning with verse 16. When you have it, say amen. 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 The Bible reads like this. But Peter stood at the door without. Mm -hmm. Then went out the other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? Amen. He saith, I am not. Mm -hmm. And the servants and officers stood there, who made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Amen. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock 
crew. From the NIV version, the Bible reads like this. Verse 16, but Peter had to wait outside the door. The other disciple was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them warming himself. Verse 25. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man, whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to grow. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Your word brings life. It brings liberation. It brings power. Today, God, I ask that you have your way in the midst of this service. Speak through my lips in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor. To be on the left or the right, choose wisely. <laughs> and say to them, neighbor, neighbor. Christ Christ needs, needs a representative. A representative. Maybe that was the wrong neighbor. You had to look somewhere. So it's a neighbor. Christ needs a representative. Come on, give the Lord a praise right now. Christ needs a representative. Yes, and before I begin, I want to preface uh, this message, and I want to tell you that um, when you use the word need, uh, it suggests to us that um, there is no other option. Amen. I don't want you to think that you're all that. Okay. Amen. <clears throat> and that God just has to use you. Yes, Lord. Right. To get his plan yes. accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. He wants to use you. Yes, Lord. But just know if you don't want to do it, Amen. he'll raise up somebody else. Yes, Lord. Somebody talk to me here. Amen. You don't want the job that God has given you. Yes. He'll give it. To somebody else. Because one thing God is not going to do is God is not going to allow his plan to go under. Because one monkey don't want to be in the show. Somebody talk to me here. If you don't want to sing in the choir, you don't want to lead the song, God will give somebody else. Come on, somebody. Everything I like about God. You don't have to be Tamla Man to sing a song in the choir. Yeah. All God wants to know, do you have a willing heart? Yeah. Somebody better talk to me here. Yeah. Because I got news for you, the greatest singers are not in the choir stage. Yeah. The greatest singers are out in the audience. Yeah. But the problem with the people in the audience is, they cannot commit themselves yeah. to being in the choir. Oh, somebody talk to me here. Yeah. I'm not taking no credit from the choir. Some people can really sing in the choir. But when you talk about commitment, coming to rehearsal. That's right. Amen. See, some of the greatest preachers are not the ones in the pulpit. But it's some of those that cannot commit themselves to a cause. Amen. Oh, y'all not talking to me here. Yeah. I don't know how I got way over there, but let me yeah. let me bring God back. Check that out here. That's all. Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Last week we, we discussed about the importance of being born again. Yeah. We talked about uh, Nicodemus. You remember Nicodemus, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Lord. Ruler of the Jews. But right. he had prestige, but he didn't have relationship. Yes, and Jesus told him, to, told him, you got to be born of the water and of the what? Air. All right, now, don't, right. Don't, don't, don't fool me now. We, we don't come to church just to, just, to, just to be dancing. We come to church to learn something. You got to be born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. He said, but that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, more not that I said unto you, you must be born again. Yes, Lord. In other words, don't be shocked. This ain't nothing new. Uh -huh. You got to give up what you used to do. Yes. Give up who you used to be. Yes, and pick up a new life in Christ. Yes. For any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Oh, I know some Bible readings in here. For old things are what? Yes. And behold, all things. Oh, I love it when you talk to me. Yes. And so we talked about how you got to be born again. For when you are born, naturally you are born into a state of sin. Mm -hmm. What did David say? Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. You're born into sin. You're not born saved. So stop acting like you've been saved all your life. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yeah. If you the only one that know the Lord, you haven't multiplied yet. Yeah. Now, 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 salvation, don't get me wrong. Salvation, glory to God, is, is in your hand. Yeah. You got to accept Jesus. You got to accept him as Lord and Savior. But if I never told you nothing, and I've been living in the house with you for five to ten years, and you don't even know who the Lord is, you don't even know his name, you don't even know that I pray, you don't even know that we bless the food, then God said, you ain't done nothing. Amen. 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 You cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power. Oh, come on, y'all. Given unto salvation to all that believe. If you're going to be a born again believer, you got to tell somebody that there is a risen Savior in this world today. Jesus said it like this. In Luke 14, 23, he said, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways mm -hmm. and the hedges yes. and compel them yep. to come in that my house yep. may be filled. Uh -huh. yes. Oh, I got to break that thing down this morning. Yes, he said, Go out yeah. yes. to the highways yeah. and the hedges. Yeah. Yes. He said, Look, don't go to just the pretty places. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't go where your friends at. He said, we're down there in the projects. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. That's right. To those people that don't like you on your job. That's right. Go to the highways yeah. and the hedges. Yeah. Not just to the clean, good looking people. Yeah. Oh, y'all, come on here. Don't act like you're the only people you witness to ain't the people that look like you. Right. And, and, and I got news for you. Don't go just to the black people. Right. Don't go just to the Indians. Don't go just to the Hispanics. Don't go just to the Hawaiians. Yes, Lord Jesus. It's Hawaiian. Where you get that from? Nami in the back, she got she got Hawaiian blood. You gotta go to the highways and the hedges. You gotta tell everybody. That Jesus saves. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He said, and why do I want you to do it? So that my house yeah. may be filled. Yeah. Look around, you see all these empty pews. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Real. You know what that's a sign of? Somebody ain't telling somebody yeah. that there is yeah. a God. Because yeah. he already said it in your word. If you tell him about it, my house Come on. Yes, so, 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 he says again, and, and the, somebody yeah. called this the Great Commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, Most of us call that the Great Commission. Uh -huh. so, so, let me, let me, let me slip this on through. If we're born again, and our job is to be witnesses. Yes. For even in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, You shall receive power after that which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. Yes, Lord. All right? So, if we're born again, and our job is to be witnesses, yes. the question after that that must be asked is, How do you witness? Amen. I think I'm about to get in trouble now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all right. Yeah. How do you witness? Look at your neighbor and say, how do you witness? How do you witness? How do you witness? The first thing that somebody going to say when it's time to witness is through your mouth. You got to open your mouth and tell somebody about Jesus. But you know what? The problem and the tragedy with just opening your mouth is you can say one thing. And live. Come on. What did Jesus say? You serve me with your lips, but your heart is far from God. I feel like preaching. So if your mouth is no good, I think one writer said you can't even bless and curse out of the same mouth. So if your mouth is no good. 
bring out your lips and took the movement out of your tongue, how would you witness? Yeah. Well, if I can't witness with my mouth, right. I know I can witness with my life. Amen. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. But you know the problem is that there are too many people in the house of God who can say, check my life. Oh, somebody better help me this morning. There are not too many people that can say, look, brother, if you want to check somebody, check me. But I come to tell you this day that God can't use nobody who got a whole lot of this and don't have a whole lot of this. Tell somebody, God needs a representative. Yes, flip over, yes. flip over, flip over to Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'm going to preach and we're going to get on out of here. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 is where I want to I wanna read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. When you have to say amen. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 It says Ye are the salt Of the earth mm -hmm. Wait a minute Jesus I'm a person But you're referring to me as an herb Oh help me y'all Yeah If you cook in here yes, Lord. Um, Let me preface this Because people don't use salt now Um if you cook old-fashioned food, raise your hand. <laughs> no, I had you. <laughs> so he said, ye are the salt of the earth. When you put salt on food, not for cooking purposes, when you're getting ready to freeze it, it's to preserve. Somebody talk to me here. <laughs> to preserve the meat. Right. Then when you put it on it for cooking purposes, you're putting it on there to give the meat what? Flavor. 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 Oh, Flavor. I love y'all. So when Jesus says, ye are the salt of the earth, what he says is, number one, I've given you a treasure. That treasure is the word of God. And I need you first to preserve it. Oh, help me somebody. I don't need you, glory to God, to let people trample over what I gave you. I need you to preserve the word. But then I need you to be the one who's going to come in the world and add some spiritual flavor to the world. I need you to be different from everybody else. Oh, somebody talk to me here. You can't go to the store, get a piece of raw turkey, and stick it in the pot as soon as you get it and think it's going to season collard greens. Because it don't have one of them. Oh, talk to me, y'all. It don't have no flavor. Don't have no season. So the same thing is with the people of God. You can't expect to bring in a sinner, somebody who don't have no flavor, and you don't have no flavor yourself. Amen. Tell somebody Christ needs a representative. He needs somebody that got some salt in their life. He needs somebody that got some word in their heart. How you gonna witness to somebody and you only know Psalms 23? You gotta know something a little bit more than that. You gotta know, go to God, and that you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. You shall be saved. And the church say amen. Look what he says. But if the salt have lost its savior, where will shall it be salty? Is it dead so good for nothing? That's right. It's good for nothing. It's I don't want to offend nobody. But there's a whole lot of people in church that don't have salt. And according to this scripture, they're good for nothing. Singing in the choir, but still don't got no salt. Us are at the door, still don't have no salt. Deacons, still don't, don't have no salt. Mothers, still don't have no salt. Preachers, I ain't gonna be nice and you know, 
still don't have no salt. But he said, if you don't have any salt, what are you good for? Any man that put his hands to the plow and look back, the Bible says he is not fit for the kingdom of God. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. But to be cast out and to be trodden under foot mm. of men. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all like Yankee? Not for Yankee candles. <laughs> Not Yankee New York. Not them. Amen. Yankee the candle cup. You like Yankee? Raise your hand. When the lights go out, you either get a lantern or Yankee. Right? To give you some light in the house. Now, when you got electricity, you burn Yankee for the smell. You just want your house to smell good. <laughs> but when the lights go out, you want light. So you get the candle. But we're living in a dark world. Who's going to put the light in the world? Because Yankee can't light up a soul. Yankee can't light up your heart. But if you got the light in you, even if they don't have a light in you, just because the light is in me. What does he say? Verse 16, let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. The problem I have with the church, everybody want to be seen. Everybody wants some type of recognition. Everybody wants some type of pat on the back. But what did he say? Let men see your works. He said if men give you a reward, that's all you're going to get. Your reward is down here in heaven. But I want my reward to be in glory. Because the things that are in glory are endless. You may applaud me today, but tomorrow I can't hear from you. But if God gives me an applause, oh, somebody better help me preach. Okay, so what are you saying, John? The point I'm trying to make to you is that when you, if you're going to be a representative of Christ, you got to have a life that reflects representation. You can't be hot and cold. Great God, I feel it. If you're going to be hot and cold, that means you're lukewarm. And he said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And I'm going to bring it down to y'all. If you don't get the scripture term, let me bring it to 21st century term. You can't straddle the fence. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. You will have to be saved or not. You will have to be a liar or not. You will have to be righteous or not. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me here. <laughs> Tell so, me, brother, I don't think it's seat then. I, I don't usually, I don't usually um, speak about politics because I don't feel like I should waste your time on people when, when the Bible says the true government was going to be on his shoulders. I, I don't do that. But there's something in, in, the, in well, was in the news and uh, it's probably not anymore, but it was in the news about politics that I think uh, is very prevalent to this message. Marco Rubio is a senator. He and Jeb Bush worked along together in Florida for whatever they were doing. Now, I'm prefacing this now. I'm not telling you to, 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 to vote for anybody. I'm making a point, and I want that to be clear because preachers, we, that, that ain't our job. You watch the news, you, you pick your own person. And the church said, Amen. Amen. But when, when they were on the campaign trail, Jeb pointed something out about Marco. He says, Marco is a senator. Congress is in session. He's supposed to be in Washington, voting and representing the people. But what is he doing? He's flying from state to state. 
campaigning for the presidency. Yeah. Right. So Jeb Bush said, how are you going to put somebody in office that won't even do the job they got to do now? Oh, I hope you follow me. So in other words, he's supposed to be a representative of the people, but he's doing his own thing. Oh, help me, y'all. So when you bring that over into the church, the problem I have and the dilemma I find myself in is that there are a lot of people that are supposed to be representatives of Christ, but they're out doing their own thing. But God, somebody help me. You got to be a representative when you're on your job, yeah. when you're at the school, yeah. when you're at the gas station, yeah. you got to be a representative yeah. of Christ. Yeah. When they saw when you're on the uh, far lane and people ride around you and flip you that birdie, you still got to be a representative. Yeah. You can't run behind them, get beside them, and no, come on here. Come on here. You got to be a representative of Christ. You got to represent Christ at all. Yes. 
He is mine. Are you a representative of Christ? Do you represent Christ? Or do you represent yourself? Any man that wishes to follow Christ, what he say? You got to deny yourself. Take up your cross. And it's not about you. You don't sing that good. You don't pray that good. You don't look that good. You got to be a representative of Jesus the Christ. Stand to your feet. Today, this, this message really was for those who are saved. Yep. This message was for the saved people because you can't just come to church and that's it. Now, I don't think you got to have a title to be a witness. Because God ain't called everybody to preach. That's right. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Some people ain't called to be teachers. Some people ain't called to be lawyers. God's callings are not limited to the church. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. Because you never know the people you can save in the law office. Yes, Lord. The people you can save in the doctor's office. Yes, Lord. Come on, say amen. amen. So, you got to be a representative. Before you take communion, one of the biggest sins is not witnessing. Because that's what he told you to do. So when the Bible says, let a man examine himself. Mm -hmm. If you have a witness before you take communion, you need to repent. Amen. You need to ask God to forgive you if you haven't told somebody. Yes, Lord. That there's a God who lives amen. and he saves. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. This day. This day. You got to be a representative. Yes, Lord. We're going to pray then do communion. Father, in Jesus' name, you've reminded us of your word that it is time to get to work. You called us to do great things. The Bible says great exploits. You even said that we should do greater things than these in your name. Right. Yes, Lord. God, there's so much for us to be doing. But we need your help. Teach us how to be better servants. Teach us how to be better witnesses. And Father, I pray and speak against fear. Because a lot of reason we don't say things to people about you is because we're afraid of what they may say back to us. But God, you knew. You didn't tell us that everybody was going to like our witness. Amen. You told us that if they don't accept it, shake off the dust. Amen. So teach us, dear God, yes, Lord. to minister to those who accept us, but to those who don't, teach us to brush it off. Yes, Lord. And continue doing what you called us to do. Oh, yes. You called us to be servants. Yes, you called us to be disciples. Yes. You called us to compel men and women unto your name, unto your throne, unto the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. So teach us this day Hallelujah. how to be better servants. Yes. And Father, if we haven't witnessed the way we're supposed to, before we partake in communion, we confess. Yes, Lord Jesus. That we haven't been the greatest witnesses. Yes. Oh, and we pray that you forgive us. Your word says if we confess our faults before you, you will be faithful and just That's right. yes, Lord. to forgive us. So this day we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise.